hello everyone welcome back on our youtube channel uh, as you know that uh, in the last video we have discussed uh, about uh, the test planning and estimation topic we were just going through this topic and until now uh, we have covered uh, till the different test approaches and strategies that are being used and the purpose and content of a test plan so in today's video we are going to discuss about entry and exit uh, criteria uh, like this is the next subtopic of uh, topic 5.2 uh, which is 5.2.3 it will tell about tell us about entry and exit criteria definition of ready and definition of done dod uh, like normally uh, you decide when uh, do you uh, when you should start the testing so are you meeting the entry criteria and when the testing is uh, finish then you decide the criteria that I have set during the test planning are they met or not so this entry and the exit criteria normally are decided during test planning so for example I will give I will give you an example for integration test what is the uh, basic entry criteria the entry criteria for integration testing is the unit testing should be completed let's say and for example you want to review the requirements uh, of, a, uh, of, uh, of a product so what is the entry criteria to review the requirements the simple uh, entry criteria is requirements should be written should be completed for example you want to review a code so what is the basic criteria for you uh, to start the review of the code that is quite simple the entry criteria is code should be ready so that is the thing like about entry and exit criteria in order to exercise effective control over the quality of the software and of the testing it is advisable to have criteria which define when a given test activity should start and when the activity is complete like entry criteria should be defined and the exit criteria as well entry criteria more typically called definition of ready in agile development yes it is known as definition of ready in agile development define or uh, like iterative uh, uh, model define the preconditions for uh, for undertaking a given test activity like entry criteria defines the conditions to start a test activity if entry criteria are not met it is likely that the activity will uh, prove more difficult more time consuming and more costly and even more risky so if entry criteria is not met and still you are doing that test activity it could be really tricky like it could be risky it could be like time consuming cost cons uh, like it will uh, more costly will not be that cost effective so entry criteria should be met then you should start your test activity exit criteria more typically called definition of done <coughs> sorry in agile development define what conditions much must, must be achieved in order to declare a test level or a set of tests completed like again when you will tell that my this uh, test so it let's say of test 10 test cases is uh, run successfully so you should define some exit criteria then when like for example let's say uh, for a system requirement you decide an exit criteria that if all of the high high uh, high risks let's say you have defined some risks you are doing risk based testing and then all of the let's say high priority or uh, like high risk uh, defects are all uh, or parts of the code are tested completely then uh, this is your exit criteria let's say for the system testing so like there could be different criteria entry and exit criteria should be defined for each test level and test type and will differ based on the test objective like you should define for each test level for each test type you should define that what should be uh, what will be your exit criteria and what will be your entry criteria you should define at every test level and at every test type typical entry criteria include availability of testable requirement user stories or models when following a model based testing strategy for example you are doing uh, a review of user stories let's say business requirements so uh, what is the entry criteria user stories should be well written should be noted down and what, what is the exit criteria we have discussed the, the feasibility of all the user stories or user requirement with the testing team and development team so it's the exit criteria like take, i am only giving you an example availability of test items that have met the exit criteria for any prior test levels let's say what is the entry criteria as i told you for integration testing so simple the unit testing should be completed so you should be very sure that uh, that uh, like test cases from the unit testing are done then you can start the entry test uh, integration testing which is the entry criteria uh, for uh, integration testing availability of test environment 
you can not start testing uh, whenever uh, till the time you have not developed your test environment availability of necessary test tools availability of test data and uh, other necessary resources so you can not start any test activity either it's a review either it's a dynamic testing static testing till your entry criteria is not met so when everything is prepared then you start dynamic testing or static testing typical exit criteria so what are the exit criteria plan test have been executed that's great like you have ex you have thought that i have 100 test cases if they are executed and no bug is found then it is an exit criteria let's say for day number 1 so it's met a defined level of coverage of requirement user stories acceptance criteria risks code has been achieved like you have defined a, a coverage criteria let's you told that uh, all 100% requirements should be tested when the all the requirement are tested tested let's say with all the test cases you say like now my 100% requirement coverage is achieved similarly you have uh, like you have told about some uh, risks about some code acceptance criteria let's say we discuss with the customer and then uh, like we were told that for example if our uh, the density uh, like the def defect density is less than 5% then then you will accept our uh, t uh, our product let's say and similarly like uh, like uh, maybe like you have said you have uh, decided some exit criteria uh, during test planning so it, like they could vary you, maybe you have agreed with your customer for some particular defect density that could be found so like it's a uh, many things that you can yeah, talk about the number of unresolved defect is within the agreed limit as i told you you have agreed with the customer like it is not 100 as i told you the like you are not sure the, as you have discussed in the seven testing principles that you can never say that i have tested the complete code there is no bug there is no issue at all still there could be some problem so like that's why you agree a limit that there could be some unresolved defect and you agree on it the number of estimated remaining defect is sufficiently low it could be an exit criteria the evaluated levels of reliability performance efficiency usability security and other relevant quality characteristics are sufficient if they are met then you say okay we are good enough to go and our testing is done so our exit criteria is met even without exit criteria being satisfied it is also common for test activities to be curtailed due to the budget being expended it is also one of the like you can say issues you have a limited budget and sometimes you are not meeting exit criteria but you have to finish your testing activities so or cut them down the schedule meeting uh, time being completed and or pressure to bring the product to the market it can be acceptable to end testing under such circumstances if the project stakeholders and business owner have reviewed and accepted the risk to go live without further testing sometimes it also possible in your real life that uh, exit criteria that you have set during test planning are not met but still you have a lot of pressure from the stakeholder and business owners that we want to go this with this product live we have to launch this product next month then you sit with them and like they agree they 100 percent agree with you on the contractual basis that this person of like some defects unresolved defects we will uh, fix them in the next release just release the product right now so you can like negotiate with them it's quite possible like it's a real time issue the next topic we will discuss is uh, 5.2.4 this is it is about text execution schedule it is also a part of test planning like for example you know that uh, test a is depending on test b so i have to run test b first and then only i can uh, run test a uh, like because uh, when the result of test data b is being used in test case a like uh, similarly there could be some risk based testing like you have to uh, 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 test some certain areas you have to prioritize your testing like which test cases or test suites will be run first and which test case or test suite will be uh, run later so we will discuss in this topic once the various test cases and test procedures are produced the same test procedure potentially automated and assemble into test suites like as we know that first of all we have to write test cases and then we define test procedure and then we make different brief cases or suites of same like for example we have similar kind of test cases starting from test case 1 to 10 so we will make suite 1 then we will make suite 2 for test case if they are similar test cases from 11 to 20 so we make different test suites the test suites can be arranged in test execution schedule that define the order in which they are to be run like there will be an order 
like test suites like we will run this test suite because the result of this test suite is used in the execution of the next test suite or test case so you have to change the order as well the test execution schedule should take into account such factor as prioritization dependencies confirmation test regression test and the most efficient sequence of executing the test like you have so many compl complexities that's why the test analyst comes into action and then who has the complete grip on the whole system let's say or the uh, uh, like system system level tester they think that uh, first of all we have to test this kind of suites then we have to do regression testing then we will get some bug let's say we will do confirmation testing and this test is depending on this test this test is risk critical so we have to test it first so different there are different things you need to consider uh, to schedule your testing ideally test cases would be ordered to run based on their priority levels like some test cases have higher priority and some have not so even uh, we will, when we will do some uh, mathematical questions in the exam you will get uh, like uh, a table let's say there is like you have a test table and over there it is written test case 1 test case 2 and test case 3 and then here is priority it is priority 1 it is priority 2 it is priority 3 then comes dependency that this test case is depending on test 2 so let's say if test case 3 has the highest priority but in dependency we see it is depending on test case 2 then although the test case 2 has a second priority let's say but still uh, it will be run first why because test case number 3 which has the highest priority is depending on the result of test case 2 so there are some factors priorities dependencies you have to think ev about everything and then only you can decide a test schedule this we will do practice uh, as a mathematical question as well so Ideally, test cases would be ordered to run based on their priority levels, usually by executing the test cases with the highest priority first. However, this practice may not work if the test cases have dependencies or the features being tested have dependencies. Like, as I told you, let's say this test case 3 has highest priority 1, test case 2 has priority 2. So, ideally, test case 3 should be run first. But in dependency column, you see the test case 3 is depending on test case 2 then it's clear also test case 3 has priority but you can never run test case 3 until the test case 2 is not run so then you have to change your execution schedule if a test case with a higher priority is dependent on a test case with a lower priority the lower priority test case must be executed first as i told you similarly if there are dependencies across test cases they must be ordered appropriately regardless of their re uh, relative priorities like you have to think about the dependencies as well like uh, and then you have to arrange your test execution schedule confirmation and regression tests must be prioritized as well based on the importance of rapid feedback on changes but here again dependencies may apply like for example you, you found like tester found a bug uh, the developer fixed it and sent it back to you and then as a tester and then now you have to do the uh, confirmation testing first regression testing now you test the whole system is okay then you will carry on with your uh, other test testing schedule so sometimes you have to be very like watchable during uh, the testing schedule like you have to change your schedule it's quite possible in some cases various sequences of tests are possible with different uh, with uh, differing levels of efficiency associated with those sequences in such cases trade off between efficiency of test execution versus the adherence to the prioritization must be made like like uh, let's say you have a sometime you have a clash priority is same let's say and even dependency is same then in those cases you think about the efficiency like which test case is anyhow efficient maybe it will make my process more efficient then the, here is like some performance test let's say some uh, some some person who is like uh, familiar or has experience in this domain will come and then you can discuss like i am right now like uh, you can say a, there is a tie on priority and dependency but now then you will think about efficiency which test will run more quickly so that i can save my time and even in the long term the result of this test will affect the other test like there could be many factors anyhow don't worry about this this you will see in detail so this was everything about this video if you have any question any doubt please uh, don't forget to write in the comment section don't forget to give us your feedback as, as well until the next video we wish you happy learning take care and bye
Thank you.